What's up everyone, my name is Zach and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, very excitedly, I am going to be reviewing Ali Hazelwood's second release of the year called Not In Love. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel it helps me out a ton. It helps me get early books, um, books early for review. Um, so if you subscribe, thank you so much. A like on the video also helps me out a ton. And I would love to know in the comments, like, Tell me about your history with Ali Hazelwood, because that's something that I'm going to do in this video before I get started on reviewing Not In Love. Just very quickly, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of history about my experiences with Ali Hazelwood and how it led me to my experience with Not In Love. So, yeah. And then also, I do need to say thank you to Penguin Random House Audio for providing me with an early copy of the audio so that I can review this book ahead of time for you guys. So yeah, thank you so much to Penguin Random House. Um, I will be doing an audio review as part of my overall review when I get to that portion of the video. If you're not interested in my relationship with Ali Hazelwood over time, then I will put a timestamp here for you guys to know you can skip past my time with Ali Hazelwood, but I would encourage you to watch it because it definitely influences the way that I reviewed Not In Love. Okay. Also, I do have another video on my channel that I'll put in the description, which was a few years ago, like two years ago, I did a like ranking order of all, all of Ali Hazelwood's books that were out at the time. The books that are not included in that video are Bride and Check-In Mate, but everything else is included in that video. So if you're interested in watching that, I'll link that in the description box below as well. Okay, so something that came up for me while I was reading this book was thinking about my time with Ali Hazelwood and how it's really changed over time. So uh, most of you probably already know, and these, I have two Illumicrate editions of her books, because lucky me. Um, the Love Hypothesis was her first ever release, and I really loved this book. I gave it five stars. I mean, it took everybody by storm when it came out, including me, and I still think this is a very good book. Still gave it five stars. Her next release right after that was Love on the Brain, which felt very similar to the Love Hypothesis, but I still really enjoyed it. I was like, okay, I'm getting the point. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I, I'll do it year after year. Like, I'm really enjoying this. And then I don't have a physical copy, but she released three STEM novellas, and I really enjoyed those too. By the end of the STEM novellas, though, I was like, okay, Ali Hazelwood, girl, I get it. You can write about women in STEM and we need more of that. Keep doing that. And also, what else can you do? Like, what else can we get from you? That next year, she published Love Theoretically, um, which I ended up DNFing and I was really sad about that. I think at that point, I was just really burned out on her writing what felt to me like the same story over and over with just very different pieces to them. And I was like, okay, I've just read all of these other ones by you. I'm not in the mood for this right now. And I, I DNF'd it. I was like, I've read this story already. I do think still after this video and where I'm at right now that I will go back and re and reread and complete Love Theoretically. I need to buy a copy of it. Um, but yeah, I, I still feel like that one I could probably enjoy. So, but I DNF'd it. And then I think the next release after that was Check-In Mate, which I have a whole video on this book. I loved this book a lot. I still do. It's still up there with my, I think these are my two favorite by her currently sitting here today. The Love Hypothesis and Check-In Mate, I think are my favorites by her like currently. Um, so I read Check in May. I really, really loved it. It was great. And then this past February, I have a whole video on this as well, where I reviewed um, Bride by Allie Hazelwood. It was okay. Um, I don't love paranormal romance. You can check out that video for like my full thoughts on the story. I think the people that are eating that up are people who really like paranormal romance, especially like what's it called? Like the Omegaverse or something. I like romance books, but I'm not that far into romance. Like if you watch my channel, I read a lot of different things and I'm finding that I like certain types of romance books. And I feel like the industry just is not going in that direction as much as I would like for my taste, but clearly it's going where the money is. And as my best friend Neve would say, <laughs> Allie Hazelwood's in her book talk loves me era. So yeah, we were talking about my review of Not In Love and she said that quote and I was like, I'm going to quote you when I film this video. So yeah, Bride came out, I DNF'd that. So at this point I have DNF'd Love Theoretically, Bride, and then Bride was the last release and then now bringing it to the reason that you're watching this video, Not In Love. 
So not in love. Um, I'm going to do my reviews a little bit while I'm going to try something different where I've actually written like a whole review out. I've started using Notion and Notion is really cool. If you don't use Notion, then you should check it out. It's it's super helpful. And I've actually written out this whole review and I blocked it off in different sections. Like I have a summary that I wrote. So it's basically what I want to tell you guys about the book without reading the Goodreads synopsis or whatever. Then I'm going to talk about the writing and the pacing and then the central themes and messages, and then any character development, and then finally my overall opinion of the book. So starting with the summary, um, this is about Rue and what is the main guy's name? I'm not good at remembering guys. This is about, I'm not good at remembering guys. I'm not good at remembering names. This is about Rue and Eli. And essentially the basic setup here that you need to know is that Rue works for her best friend's biotech company. Cause we gotta have a little bit of STEM in there, which I actually really liked that. Um, so Rue works for her best friend's biotech company and um, they're getting bought out by another company, which Eli owns that company. And there's some suspicion that Eli's company is trying to steal Rue's best friend's like patent on this biotech situation. Now, take it a step back and Rue and Eli actually meet on a dating app before they are aware that they're working for these companies. This is sort of like a workplace romance in a way. It combines like STEM and a workplace romance and a very sex positive book because they talk a lot about like what it's like being on dating apps and meeting people for like sexual purposes. So as the book goes on and the story unfolds, um, no spoilers here, but it turns basically like I wrote in my review into a Romeo and Juliet situation. It's in Ali Hazelwood's words, this is a forbidden romance because the, this guy is buying out her best friend's company. There's suspicion that he's trying to steal the biotech from her friend's company. And so they're not supposed to be together, but of course they can't stay away from each other. So that's basically the basic premise of it. Um, to take note of the Penguin Random House edition audio that I got. So if you do want to listen to this on audio, I think that's a fine way to intake the story. I will say the male's voice is very, very good. He sounds kind of like a serial killer sometimes, but honestly, for a romance novel, whatever. <laughs> like it, it was actually pretty entertaining. I think the male did a really, really good job. The female, it was fine. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. For some reason, it felt kind of robotic at times, but it didn't really take me out of the story i was just like oh i should make note of this happening so yeah uh i would say the audio is a fine way to intake the book it it's good okay so now into the writing and the pacing so the whole reason that i brought you guys through my train of a like chain of timeline of my time with Allie Hazelwood is because I've noticed something happening. From her earlier books, there is less sex and more plot. And as we've gone on to her later books, there is more sex and less plot. In my review, I wrote, Not in Love is about 70% sex and 30% plot, if I'm being generous. Like, we're just really moving in that direction, which is fine. Um, I think that that's what people want. I think that's what's selling right now. But for me personally, I prefer more of like Emily Henry style, which is there is sex in the books, which is fine. Like I'm totally cool with that. Uh, but there is more plot and more character development. That's not the case for Not in Love. There is a lot of convers not just a lot of sex, but a lot of conversation about sex, which again is fine. But when I'm, my personal taste, I mean, you're watching my review, is that I prefer there to be more character development, more substance to the characters than just the, than just the intimacy and intercourse, essentially. Um, and so in my review, I was talking about how in her earlier books and then also in Check and Mate, which just released this past November, she's putting out books like, like a paper mill. Um, this past November, the sex in that book, this is a YA book, but I felt like it was done appropriately. And I actually really, really love that book, but I think it's because Ali Hazelwood could not write like this for a YA book. She was forced into like developing more plot. And so I know that she can do it. She can make really good characters. She has a really witty banner in all of her books, including Not In Love. Um, the banter and the, the wittiness is just, it's really good. Um, and I wanted to see more of that and less, again, of the like spiciness of the books. So yeah, that's kind of my opinion on like the writing and the pacing. The, there isn't really pacing because 
there's just this overarching theme. So yeah, the next section of my review was like the themes and messages. And the, the central message is just, can Rue and Eli get away with this forbidden romance and what's going to happen with the company? And I wrote, there, there are stakes. The stakes are kind of high, I guess, but there's no emotional pull. Like, it, I didn't care. Like, I, I did not care what happened because... I can feel the stakes. I know that there's this chance that they're going to get caught and Rue's best friend is going to be really upset with her, but I didn't feel the emotional pull of either her her allegiance to her best friend or her allegiance to Eli if that's what she was going to go for. Like it just didn't feel like there was a lot of emotion and heart in this book. Yeah. So yeah. It does feel pretty typical Ali Hazelwood. Like you can feel the stem in it. You can feel Ali Hazelwood's voice and writing in it. It just wasn't my favorite. And uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. So the next part of the review is character development. This is where I tell you guys at 60% of the book, I did DNF it. And so the character development at 60% was none. I know a lot of times character development will happen like at the end, especially in a romance novel, but I was not, I didn't care enough to stick it out. I wanted to see like breadcrumbs of character development and some of you might, like I actually think a lot of people will like this book, which is why I've explained kind of my trajectory with Ali Hazelwood and what I've liked and what I didn't like so that you can figure out, maybe you like the things that I don't or you don't like the things that I do. And so hopefully this review is helpful in any regard. But yeah, I just, I didn't care. I, I literally got to the point I was 60% in and I was like, okay, I am going to stop because I'm getting frustrated and I don't care. And I'm sad because I want the old Allie Hazelwood back. Um, but I was like, I'm going to go take a shower. And when I get out, I'll decide if I'm going to DNF this book or not. I thought about it. I thought about it. I was like, I, I, I just don't care. Like, I don't, I don't care. I know they're going to end up together. And if they don't, then I guess fool me once. Right. But that would be an interesting twist if they didn't end up together. But I assume they're going to end up together. They're going to, there's probably going to be a fallout with her best friend. I don't know. So this is not a spoiler. I have not finished the book, but I imagine it's quite predictable. There's probably going to be a fallout with her best friend and maybe her best friend wasn't as good as she said she was, or maybe there's some reconciliation with Eli. I don't know. It's There's not that many things that can happen, which is another reason why I was like, I just don't care anymore. So that brings me to my overall opinion of the book, my rating, my review. Um, so I'm not going to rate this book because I DNF'd it. So that that's my rating. Um, and I hope that I've explained who would like this book and who wouldn't. The moral of the story is I miss old Allie Hazelwood. At this rate, I've DNF'd Love Theoretically. I loved Check-In Mate. I DNF'd Bride. And now I've DNF'd Not In Love. So I'm not done with Allie Hazelwood yet. I'm still going to give her a try. Uh, but it might be that I like her way YA books better. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I think that I don't think that Ali Hazelwood is writing just what sells for the sake of it being what sells. I, I don't think that. I do think that's part of it, but I don't think she's entirely doing that. There's nothing wrong with with books having a lot of sex in them and and things like that. I I don't have a problem with that. It's just I personally want more from the romance books that I'm reading. Oh, also something else about Ali Hazelwood. She always writes these really tall men. I want to give her credit though, that in this book, the woman is also really tall. So that was really cool because that's been one of most of our, as readers, complaints about Ali Hazelwood over the years is that all of the men are really tall and the women are really short and dainty and blah, blah, blah. But in this one, like the woman's also really tall and that was really cool representation to see. So I hope that I've set you up for what you can expect in this book. And even though it wasn't for me, maybe it'll be for you, or maybe you're also recognizing like, hey, this isn't something that I want. I'll try again next time. I don't know. I would love to know in the comments, like what your overall thoughts are after hearing my review of the book. And yeah, definitely let me know. Thank you again to Ping Random House Audio for giving me early access so that I could read it and get this review out to you guys. Um, you will be seeing it around the release date because that's when most people are checking out reviews of books. If I post them too early, then people aren't as excited. So I'm going to hold the review until closer to the publication date. But please let me know if you've read this, if you want to read this. I want to know what other people think because I definitely don't think that I'm <laughs> like the correct you know, opinion here. I, I want to talk about this. So let me know what you guys think.
Um, as always, I want to end the video by saying thank you so much to the Mostly Ghostly crew who support my channel every month through my channel membership. If you're interested in supporting what I do here on YouTube in another way, please check out my channel membership. You get added benefits, and honestly, it goes a long way for helping me keep my channel running. So thank you so much to the Mostly Ghostly crew. I love you guys so much. And then to end the video, I want to say thank you to you for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Here we go again, you think by now I know better Locked in my head, romanticizing forever